welcome to part four. I'm sorry I added an extra video in, but I just wanted to make sure that people knew where to end their work if they wanted to watch that video. Right, so now I'm going to show you how to do the collar. I've left the tail. I haven't sewn this in deliberately because what I want to do is I want to get my work and I'm just going to just do my magic loop onto my hook. And I'm actually going to cast on at this point where um, I've got a finishing point. So I've got two tails together so that those two tails can be tied in a knot so that they're secure. And I'm casting on with a single crochet. Okay? Now when we go to work back to front inside this area here, we're just going to just work underneath the one loop that we left behind and just do a single crochet all the way around and this is going to give us it's going to it's giving us this different effect but it's just going to bring in if I just get the other jumper to show you la 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 as you can you can see the line area you can see where I've done this double um, this two rows of single crochet this is it's keeping the head hole the same width but it's just brought it in slightly so you can still get your head through easily but it's just made it look narrower so that you don't end up with a giant head hole because I thought that looked a bit weird so all I'm going to do is purely do two rounds of single crochet all the way around I don't slip stitch to join I literally just carry on and go all the way around I slip stitch to join on at the very very end of my second round and that then leaves me the two tails the these two tails are, are left together to be able to tie in a knot to then make that point really secure before I sew in so that we don't have anything that's going to come undone near the baby's neck because oh, I just don't want the responsibility of saying your pattern was rubbish it fell to bits and my baby was all tangled up nearly strangled them or even worse so I'm trying to make sure that I've thought about the problems as well as the nice things so that we don't actually have those problems because um, that would be just awful if your work came undone and caused some kind of injury so I'm just very very conscious of that I think it's because of, of me working a lot with food and with cakes um, I just so when I make my cake toppers I don't use any sticks or anything that's not edible then that way nobody can get hurt and it's just sugar my things are just sugar at the end of the day which I know is not healthy but everybody likes a cake and I like making the cake toppers it's been um, it's been a very very interesting business for me to begin it it all began by accident because when I actually first began um, doing my business I used to be a teaching assistant and my contract ran out and there was no more special needs children for me to look after at that time so my contract wasn't renewed and so I was told I'd got a week left until I had no job so I decided to take a leap of faith and go self-employed and I knew how to make cakes and I knew how to make cake toppers so that's what I chose to do but I was also crocheting at that time I had not been crocheting for that long um, this was always a funny stitch just there if we go through two loops I think that that'll make that nice uh, and then we're just going to go we're back to the very beginning so I don't want to work in that one again and then I'm going to just then go into the very first single crochet and just single crochet again and don't worry if that looks like a big hole just there because we'll pull that tight when we do our, our tightening up so anyway where was I oh yes I'd started the business but I was also crocheting 
Um, I needed to do the business, do the cake toppers and things, because I needed to earn the money to be able to pay my rent and to survive. Um, and the crochet, that was just, well, it wasn't, it wasn't something that I felt that I was going to be able to make much money from to be able to survive on. Um, but I still carried on crocheting and I still improved on patterns that I was writing at that time. And now, here we are, three and a half, four years later, and I'm finally in a position where I actually can share what I've actually been doing in the nicest possible way. Um, so I'm passing my information on so that other people can do it. I know that there's going to be people out there that go, oh yeah, that's great, and copy it and make out that they've written the pattern and stuff like that. Well, sorry, karma's going to come and bite your bum. So, um, I have written this pattern. This is my own design. I do own the copyright and... I am sharing it with everybody. I want everybody to be able to use it, everybody will be able to share it, and the garments that you make from it that you're allowed to sell. Because I know it sounds awful. People are mean. People don't want to pay um, very much money for handmade garments these days, yet. When you look at this, I mean, it's like to, to make this little tiny sweater complete with a hoodie and finishing off and doing all of your sewing in of your edges and everything is going to take you about three hours. Now, if you're on um, the minimum wage, of, which is, what is it, still £6.80, let's round it up to £7 an hour. I'm right at the very end now, look, so I'm just going to just... Do one more single crochet and slip stitch together to join there. If you was on £7 an hour and it's taking you three hours, that means that this little tiny hoodie here, there, would be valued at £21. I'm not being funny. People don't want to pay that. They go, oh, people just crochet for the fun of it. And it's not worth it. But... Well, you are worth it. You are worth getting some money for what you've done. And I think you should be appreciated a lot more. This is, this is, it's a lot more involved than people think. So, there we have it, look. We have now finished. This is the finishing point, And now I've got three strands. What I will do is I will get the third strand, work it through and get it to these ones as well so I'll end up tying all of these together so that they're all tied um, in a knot before I actually sew in the loose ends just to make sure that that is all nice and secure. Okay, so there we go, that's it. We now have our little jumper with its little collar point and in the next video I'm going to show you how to add on I'm just going to show you how to do one sleeve because obviously once you've learned how to do one then you can do both of them okay so thank you for watching thank you for liking thank you for subscribing and I'll see you in my next video bye for now